This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, we do encourage you to like and share them on Facebook and other social media. It's time for Careology, the science of caring. And this week, Roxy has sent us a very special guest host, Bishop A.R. Rivers. Good evening, you guys seen me here before sitting in with Miss Roxy. I'm glad to be back here again. As usual, she's very busy, you know, so she asked me to come in and sit in for her tonight. And I'm so delighted to be able to uh, fulfill that request on tonight because we have a very special guest, guest with our, us on tonight. I want to just call her. Her name is Veronica. Yes. Hallelujah. And she has a, an enormous amount of information to share with us, things that are going to delight you, things that are going to cause you to be um, in better health. And I can't just, I can't wait to be able to introduce her and let her tell you a little bit of something about herself an amazing lady. This is Veronica. Well, thank you, Bishop. It is my honor and pleasure to be here today, so thank you. And uh, about me, I guess uh, I've been very passionate about uh, holistic health most of my life, and I ended up getting very, very ill. I think a lot of people can relate to that these days. It turned up to be a, um, a microbiome issue, like a gut issue called candida and it was really bad. It wasn't Albicans candida, it was doubly nieces candida. But I pretty much had to take everything that I ate off of my plate and relearn how to eat to get healthy. So I stayed away from the medications. I didn't take any medications to heal this condition against physician advice, <laughs> but it was the way I wanted to go. And uh, in that process, in that trial, I learned how to make some really amazing things and I learned how to help other people to learn how to eat better. And so I decided to go to school. I went to integrative nutrition school. I was certified last year in July in integrative nutrition and it is definitely my passion um, to see people dropping weight or learning something new. Um, like my best friend who doesn't eat well at all will, um, after I did went through my presentation with her that I'm gonna not doing here today, but I have a presentation coming. And she literally was picking up uh, food in her house and reading labels. So, wow. I mean, to me, that was like a huge step. Uh, even the smallest step that can change somebody's life is amazing. Yeah, you know what, I, I noticed, I went through part of your bio and some other information that I saw uh, concerning you and your passion. Mm -hmm. And I saw, I saw that there's a lot of things that are connected to our health that um, that we may have some problems with, but from the, the information I got about you, you handle a lot of that. You have an approach to how we should deal with those um, things. Um, I, I noticed also that there were like two uh, areas that were um, close to me in terms of uh, treatment was the um, lactose intolerance mm -hmm. was one, and the other one that you used I think was um, the amount of sugar that we um, take in mm -hmm. and the various forms of sugar. I just like to deal with the, with the lactose intolerance because that's a passion for me and it was something I had to deal with growing up. I didn't know I had lactose intolerance mm -hmm. and till every time I would eat milk or something that contained milk that I would have some reaction to it. Can you tell us about the, you know, the hidden dangers of, of drinking uh, regular cow milk? Well, sure. Um, well, I mean, realistically, we're the only mammal that drinks milk after it's weaned. So if you think about that, are we really supposed to be drinking milk? And sure, when I was younger, I drank a lot of milk. I loved milk. It was delicious and cheese and all that good stuff. But then we're dealing with the case of morphine in the cheese, which is a whole nother story. But it's very addictive. And as far as the allergies, like I have an allergy to milk products now. So I don't, I can't have dairy or cheese. But there are so many alternatives out there you know there are a lot of like um dia makes uh brands of cheese that we can eat they're made from maybe soy um another one are coconuts you know different things are made biolife is one of my favorites they make their products from coconut 
but do we really need those things or do we think we need those things? I don't know that we need cheese. Cheese actually binds up in the stomach, so it causes a lot of bloating. And people don't realize, you know, having an allergy to dairy or eating just from eating cheese, you could just be bloated. Like when you take cheese out of your diet for a couple of weeks, you go, wow, all that bloating just went away. And you can and you can do elimination diets yourself just by taking things out to see how your body reacts while they're out of out of your system. Well, you know, I can speak from my own personal experience as far as the milk and milk byproducts are concerned. I had a lot of problems sometimes with just swallowing and sometimes just just almost get choking on wow. my own saliva because of the mucus that was built up over a period of time mm -hmm. from just drinking milk from a glass, just a glass of milk or drinking milk in some other form, maybe in a cup of coffee, maybe having a, um, uh, some ice cream or something like that. But I would notice I would start coughing and it would just be not something that was very pleasant. And we dealt with that for a long time. I tried to deal with it for a long time, but I didn't know it was coming from the, um, from the uh, milk and the milk byproducts. Oh yeah, people have very different reactions to things. Some people will get skin conditions, some people will have stomach issues, some people will have the mucus or have like an itchy throat or have like allergen reactions in the mouth. It's amazing the different things, but everybody's body's so different. Right, I'm, and you know, I'm, I'm glad that you, you have like a, um, a global approach to the way that you deal with um, health issues. Mm -hmm. and how they uh, impact us as individuals because we can't lump everybody into one category because something that affects me in one way may not affect um, you in that same way. You know, we're all unique in some way or, or, or another. Mm -hmm. um, if you have anything else to say about the, um, the glucose, you can, uh, um, the, um, the, um, the milk, the, yeah, the milk byproducts, you can feel free to just inform us of Absolutely. something else we should. Well, you know, also today, the way that milk and dairy are handled, if you've watched any of the animal farming or how they're doing that, all of the steroids and the hormones and things like that, and we see it in our children, like overdeveloped at younger ages, you know, there's a huge hormone issue going on there. So if people are going to have dairy products, they need to be organic without those hormones and things that they're feeding to these animals and the antibiotics because you become resistant to all these antibiotics the more you're taking in antibiotics from other sources than antibiotics you know you know absolutely <coughs> you know, I, I noticed <coughs> through the years that when I was growing up all the kids were about the same size <laughs> and now my, my kid I mean my wife is short I'm short but the kid is looking like this he's this to over six feet tall <laughs> and with it's got to be coming from somewhere so it's the introduction of uh, growth hormones as um, a, um, the antibiotics, that's not good in another way because when you really need it, they become ineffective or ineffective when you go to your regular doctor if you have an infection. Am I right about that? Well, and don't forget too, yes, and don't forget too what it does to the microbiome in the stomach. So our microbiome, our stomach controls our hormones, it controls our immune systems. Like that microbiome is so important. We are more like yeast and bacteria than we are actual human cells. So that microbiome balance is so important. And we throw in the antibiotics in there, it kills everything off. And then the bad overgrow. And now instead of having all this good flora, you have the bad flora and you have to try to rebalance. But that affects your immune system, it affects our skin, it affects everything, our hormones, everything. They, uh, they encouraged us to drink our milk and grow up strong. <laughs> but uh, what we did, we thought that it worked because we did grow up strong. But uh, a lot of that, it might be due to the, to the uh, hormones that they, that they give the cattle. Mm -hmm. And so that's a little too much for we humans. <laughs> well, and look at the situation today. All of the allergies that are popping up, yeah. more and more wheat allergies, more and more dairy allergies, more and more sugar issues, more and more ADD, ADHD, all these health issues that are popping up. Yeah, some of the things you see today you didn't see years ago when things were just just regular, not complicated. The, what is the, there's an expression um, that's used. Um, it's... Um, it's the uh, modified, um, I can't, I don't think, 
GMO? Oh, it? the GMOs. All right. So that's a whole nother story right yeah, there. So we, so, I mean, it's wonderful because all of these things are related. It's wonderful in terms of uh, being able to go to a source and get as much information on the things that really affect us in, in such an enormous way. Mm -hmm. uh, the GMOs, what's, this, what's the story with that one? Can you explain that to our, our listeners? Yeah, they have genetically modified different foods, fruits, vegetables, things like that. Corn being one of the big ones and soybeans. And you know, corn and soy are in just about everything. But they literally are um, splicing the corn with an actual pesticide and then it grows uh, to be um, a pesticide, like a pest resistant, its own self. So there's a, a really great documentary called GMO OMG. And I recommend that everybody watch GMO OMG. There's because no way that can be good for us. No. No, it's good for the people that produce it. Right, because they make but a lot of money. They make a lot of money yeah. off of that. That's well, right. think about this, gentlemen. It, that, what it does is it explodes the stomach of the bugs. So yeah. what is going on in the world today with digestion issues, digestion issues, digestion issues everywhere we turn? There's a war going on in your belly, folk. Mm -hmm. There's a war. It's hostile, uh, hostile territory for many of us. Until we get that contained and get that under control, that we're gonna have issues. So we take it one, like you eat a, a 5,000 pound elephant, one bite at a time. Exactly. This is the bite we're taking tonight to inform <laughs> you guys of what we're dealing with and then try to give an answer to how we can overcome some of these problems. You're right Wrong. about the war in the belly though. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I hear it all the time. <laughs> you, you don't eat breakfast on time, your belly will go to tell war. You, tell you, <laughs> yeah, let you know. It's like, feed me now. Yeah. <laughs> And you want to put the right stuff in there to get what the body needs. Right, right, right. So, you know, so it is, um, this is very informative. The, um, I see these two terms together. As a matter of fact, I think it's here on your bio someplace. It's um, gluten and dairy-free. Mm -hmm. Okay, gluten. Now, you mentioned something about wheat a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. all right? And I think it's not only wheat, it's barley. And, uh, and rye as well. And corn and rice, and, and, grains. And, and, uh, yeah, now, right now, there's a, like a, a, a big push that's going on with uh, the general public over gluten-free or not gluten-free. And whether or not, I would like to know, is that something that we all as a population be, should be concerned with? Or is that something that only affects certain individuals? Well, <laughs> That's a twofold answer. It does affect certain, like celiac and people with allergies. Mine is an allergy. So if I eat something with gluten, I'm not going to run to the hospital. A celiac will. So theirs are very, very allergic to gluten. And the way wheat was, say, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, was a whole different wheat than what we're eating today. So they modified the wheat. Wheat used to be in big stalks of grass, and then it became this dwarf wheat, and they just mass produced it to the marketplace. If you listen to people like Dr. William Davis, who wrote the Wheat Belly books, um, he'll tell you that grains in general, we are not cows, we do not have six chambers in our stomach, and we are not meant to eat any seeds of grass or any grasses, which are wheat and rice and corn and all of those things. So there was something going on with those <coughs> Wheaties commercials when I would run to get the Wheaties every day because I wanted to be big and strong. Uh, they, they lied to me. Or is it a different wheat today? It's a different wheat. I think wheat. it's a different, it's a very different wheat today than it was. But there, in, in nutrition, there are both sides to the same fence. Like there's an argument for grains and argument against grains. And both are backed by science. So it comes down to bio-individuality in every circumstance. And then you mentioned uh, a, a disorder called celica. Celiac. Celiac. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Celiac. Now, can you, for our audience, can you just um, just give us a brief explanation as what what that is? I know it has to do something with the with the gut, and uh, I don't know if it's the pH in the gut or the uh, level. It's a, they have a very severe allergy to gluten, so it's basically a very severe allergy. 
that they have. And I'm not a medical doctor, so I cannot advise on those kind of things, but I am the person on the back end that when they're diagnosed with something like right. that, that I'll say, okay, here's a way to avoid that. And now gluten-free products, let's clarify also, glut not all gluten-free products are good for you. They're filled with rice flour and corn starches and a whole lot of crap that we shouldn't be eating anyway, full of sugar. So again, gluten-free, depending upon how you're doing gluten-free, could also be bad for you. Okay, so this is like a, a walk on a tightrope in a sense mm -hmm. that you have to know what you're dealing with. You just mm -hmm. can't pick up the box and you see just a, a you know, general statement being made. Mm -mm. At some point, you have to go a little bit deeper and say, okay, this is gluten-free, but uh, how much sugar does it contain? Mm -hmm. Okay, do I have a sugar? But right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pause for the cause, and we'll be back shortly. And if by chance you might have a question, our number is 340-1590. We do have a, a, a specialist, a certified integrative nutrition health coach with us, and that's what uh, Veronica does. So if you'd like to call us, 340-1590. We'll be right back with Careology, the science of caring. If you could reimagine the way you buy a car, what would you do? Make it simple, make negotiations disappear, demand transparency, then experience amazing at your Treasure Coast Lexus dealer. Car buying simplified. Treasure Coast Lexus is a proud sponsor of Careology. Every Tuesday at 6.05 p.m., caring and supporting for our community. Car buying simplified. Check out your Treasure Coast Lexus dealer. Why call two men in a truck of the Treasure Coast? You want to move your business without moving a single meeting? You want it handled with no fuss. Lots of stuff, no time to move it. You need the pros that care. That's why you call two men in a truck of the Treasure Coast. Family owned and operated franchise. Call 772-236-0827. 772-236-0827. Zero eight two seven movers who care. Visit two men in a truck treasurecoast.com. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Back to Curology now, and uh, Roxy sent us a guest host who has his own guest with him. It's Bishop A. R. Rivers, your host tonight on Curology. Okay, we're back, we're back again. Yeah, we want to. We just spoke about the importance of labels, and that hit a nerve in me because um, in my family, uh, I have two children that have um, diabetes, mm. juvenile diabetes, which is really is unusual for one child, but it's super unusual when you have two childs, two children. And what I've been doing, I have forced to do over the years is to be one to check labels and labeling and to make sure about not only the sugar content, but those things that are in a product that convert into sugar, like carbohydrates, mm -hmm. okay? So we're gonna talk now to our expert, Veronica, about how it is important or why it's important that we read the labels, not only read the labels, look for hidden language for things that that are known as sugar but are also known by other names uh, when they're printed on the box uh, or your a nutritious value label that comes on the box mm -hmm. okay miss veronica <laughs> take this well, to the label thankfully uh, they have had to modify the nutritional label because in the back in the day it was just it would tell you how much sugar was there but it didn't say the um, added sugars that were there. So now they're showing you the added sugars. Some things come with sugar, like if there's strawberries or you know, some kind of fruit in there, it automatically has some sweet potato. They have sugar automatically, but they're natural sugars versus the added sugars, which I have a paper, hopefully we'll put on the video, that shows 75 different names um, that you can find for sugar. So. On the back of one box, it was actually a um, granola bar. 
and I was looking at all the stuff. It had honey, it had corn syrup, it had like four or five different kinds of sugar in there. And then you look and there's like, there's like, you know, 16 grams of sugar in this bar. And there are five different sugars that are hiding in that label. So it's not just honey or cane sugar or this or that. They're putting malodextrin and dextrose and all these other things, which are also sugars in that label. And a, and a fact that's a little bit scary is that um, about 20 years ago, people only had, you know, 20 pounds of sugar a year. And nowadays, people are taking, individuals are taking 220 pounds of sugar in a year. And it's all from hiding sugars that are put in these processed foods. They're put anything in a box, a can, a jar. Um, anything that's processed will generally have sugars in it. I, I remember um, years ago, they would label things with, um, with a statement like your daily um, requirements for different... Oh, your RDA. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what does the RDA stand for? Um, recommended daily, daily allowance. allowance. Yeah. Okay. Recommended daily allowance. Do they have anything like that when it comes to sugar? Is yes. there one? The All American right. Heart Association says <clears throat> that for a woman, it shouldn't be more than six teaspoons of sugar in a day from all sources, including Teaspoons. Fruit. Teaspoons. And for men, it's nine. And that includes your fruits, you know, the, the sugars from vegetables. So no more than six teaspoons for women and nine for men, according to the ADA. What is the average for the or average AHA. person in America, for men and women? What are, they, what are they actually taking in? Horrifying. Okay, so the average person that is not aware of what they're eating at all, probably 46 teaspoons of sugar a day. And the healthy eater, quote, quote, is taking in about 24 teaspoons a day. So in any event, it's elevated. Yes. It exceeds your the daily um, requirements. By four, four times. By four times. As a, as a woman, four times, yeah. I was diagnosed with diabetes type 2 at one time, and I heard that it was reversible, so I gave it a try because I've learned stuff over the years working with nutritionists on the radio. I've heard all the everything about uh, sugar and the dangers of it, but what I realized was when I cut out the sugar completely and only took in sugar from fruit, that's the only way anybody can experience weight loss. The sugar has to go first. Mm -hmm. That's the important part. It's so true. Then because the exercise the works. The liver cannot process the sugar. So what it does is it shoots it out into the body as fat. So the triglycerides go up. The waistline goes out. The body just doesn't know how to process all of that sugar. If sugar were just invented today, it'd never get approval from the FDA. It would never be released because it's so dangerous. It is very dangerous. I don't think anyone should eat white sugar ever. No. And, you know, they push agave on people, but agave is super high in fructose. 90% of it is fructose. So agave is not healthy to be eating either. Is stevia okay? Stevia is okay. okay. I use monk fruit sweeteners. Mm. There's a lot of alternatives. Xylitol. Sometimes they give you a little, you know, they might make your stomach a little gassy, but... Um, to get away from those sugars, there's a lot of different alternatives right well, now. We should really do our research on that when we're making substitute mm -hmm. because you, would, you can actually solve one problem and create another problem. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the stuff that they come out in the, from the lab with is maybe a thousand times sweeter than, than regular sugar, and mm -hmm. you can overdo it. It can have some type of negative chemical reaction inside your, your system. So to... Mm -hmm. um, to stay on top of that, you need the help of uh, experts like we have today that can tell us, you know, what's been tested, what's been proven, mm -hmm. and what's actually been, what is approved for your safety. If people have access to a kinesiology person or they do muscle testing, mm -hmm. they can actually mm -hmm. hold the product and test people with those products to see if they test well. Like, I test well with liquid sucralose. So when I was with no sugar, like the Candida diet is the strictest diet on the planet. What's it called? Candida diet. Okay. And that was when I had to take, every, like I couldn't even have carbs because they turned into sugar, not, no sugar at all because it fed the candida. It was like throwing gasoline on a fire. I would never get better if I didn't cut it all out. So those things tested well for me, liquid sucralose. So like a liquid Splenda, but not powdered Splenda. Some people demonize Splenda. If you don't do Splenda, that's fine. I don't do powdered Splenda. But I test products with myself to make sure 
that they are good for me because I could have, I've had a skin reaction in the past to, you know, a sweetener that I tried and it gave me a rash that I, it was just not fun. So, and it's all goes back to if you have access to those people, otherwise try it for a week, see how you do with it. If you notice reactions, then take it back out of your diet. So, you, so in other words, you're saying it's, it's important for us to do some self-monitoring? Absolutely. Okay, because sometimes you can get to the physician and you might have forgotten a small activity or something that changed in your system and he really can't treat it because he doesn't know you as well as you know you yourself precisely okay All we right. know our bodies better than anyone else and we're all such unique individuals that's the principle of integrative nutrition there's no one size fits all one man's food is another man's poison so how important is it for monitoring of course I'll get that. I'll get that. Um, how, how important is it for you to monitor um, yourself in terms of um, intake and how much you take in and how, how important is that for you to, to do that as an individual? Um, I think that would depend because if you're taking in good food, like I tell people, if you just eat real food, you're not going to have a challenge. What happens is you eat real food, you fill up, you're satiated and you don't need to keep eating. But sugar actually cuts off our um, uh, appetite suppressant. It cuts off our appetite. So we don't ever know when we're full. You know, it's like we just keep eating and eating and eating all this processed food with all this sugar and it just doesn't ever satiate us. Plus, there's no nutritional value in most of it. Wow. Wow. So we're paying for nothing. Mm -hmm. But we're paying. <laughs> we're paying in more ways we're than one. Yeah. We're <laughs> we're <laughs> mm. I say spend the money on the good food and you'll save the money on the hospital bills later. Because I don't mind spending money on food. I believe that my body is my best investment. And if I'm sick, you know, then what? Can't work, can't do this, can't do that. So why not take care of the temple, right? Spend the money on the good food. Take care of yourself. Monitor yourself. Feel your best. And then you can do whatever you want to do. Okay. All right. So, um, so we, we talked about regular sugar, uh, sugar intake and some of the other things that convert into sugar. Okay. Now, what about, um, you know, um, uh, just uh, food in general, the types of food, a, a certain type of food that you want to eat that can help you with either lowering your um, your sugar level, your blood sugar level, mm -hmm. or or helping you to just live more healthy. Not not candy, nothing added, no soda or anything like that, but other types of fruits or vegetables or herbs or anything yeah. like that i like fresh herbs i mean if people like fresh herbs use fresher i love herbs because they season the food you don't need the sugars and the and the extra stuff when you have that flavor from the herbs bananas are super high in sugar so if you're cutting out sugar the best fruits to have would be the berries the blueberries the blackberries the strawberries the raspberries green apples kiwi they're all very low glycemic fruits Mangoes are high in sugar. Bananas are high in sugar. Watermelons high in sugar. So the, all those guys, even though it's natural sugar, it's still sugar. The body's going to process it in a certain way. I, I, I know. I heard you mention about berries. Uh, um, they mentioned that also in terms of um, um, antioxidants yes. as well. All right. So that's a, an added benefit that you have. Now, what does that actually do? For those that are um, antioxidants do a lot of things they help us our immune system they help fight off free radicals so could be like um, you know uh, anti-aging properties I want that one <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting in line for they that they make our skin look good <laughs> you know I mean they do so many great things they help support our system which also supports our hormones and our immune system um, lots of water we need lots of water because water is going to flush out anything bad, but it also hydrates our skin, you know. So we look younger, longer when we hydrate. It plumps up our skin. Water is so good for us. I mean, so, so we can get medicinal benefits, not just at the drugstore. We can go right to the kitchen and get some <laughs> many benefits. You can actually <laughs> put them on your face. I've done avocado, avocado, egg white, uh, honey, and what else? I put olive oil, and I will do like a skin mask with fresh, you know, you grind it up in your kitchen in your little processor, 
skin masks, hair masks. I make all that stuff out of real food. Oh, okay. So, mm. you know, we're going to get to to some um, <laughs> some of your, your recommendations a little bit later <laughs> and maybe some um, references that you can give us as well before we close yes. about what we should do and, and not do in terms of um, our, our healthy life. Now, mm -hmm. what part in not so much eating, what part does exercise play in us being healthy? Because I know that you're, that you're holistic, mm -hmm. you know, a natural, uh, naturalist, mm -hmm. all right, that you like healthy food and healthy activities. Mm -hmm. What kind of exercise can we do to enhance the things that we put into our body? Is there something we can do? Sure. I mean, if people, it depends on people's tolerance to um, exercise as well. But even if you just get out and walk, get out in nature, breathe the fresh air, walk the neighborhood, do some stretching if you can. Um, stretching is always good because it loosens up the frame of the body so you don't get all those aches and pain. You know what I mean? That helps a lot. If you can do strength and weight training, that's great. Jump on an elliptical, get some cardio in there. I mean, I think movement is really important. People should definitely get movement. And particularly now with all of the things that are going on from the last year with the pandemic and with um, COVID, where we're all locked down or locked in or uh, immobile. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, last week I started, well, it actually was this week, I started my little exercise. I went to the gym. I got on one of the treadmills. A lot of guys are not wearing masks. I'm still wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. But I found it was very difficult for me to breathe because I kept, I was br trying to breathe in um, oxygen, but I was breathing in air that I've already expended, uh, uh, CO2, mm -hmm. and it was very hard. So I did, I took your suggestion before you even gave it to me. <laughs> and I went walk it. Mm -hmm. I took yeah. the mask off and I walked and I'm telling you, it was euphoric. Yeah. All right, it didn't overdo it. I walked around the circle one time and I stopped and that was very helpful. So mm -hmm. exercise is good. And the spiritual nature of just being in nature you know what I mean? Looking at the gifts that we have all around us brings us to gratitude, which also helps our health. This takes us to another level. <laughs> <laughs> Spirituality is part of our health. It's what we consume. Absolutely. And so, you would know about that, Bishop. Oh, indeed, <laughs> indeed. So we are, we're not just in the flesh. We want to be in the spirit. And, and the way we think about our lives and the importance of our lives and being able, and you know, like there's a uh, uh, writing that says, that the um, body is the temple of God and that you don't want to defile that temple by putting things in the, into it um, that's impure, mm -hmm. okay? And that's, that, that means um, not only physical things, but the way we think, yes. the attitude that we have. And our, the repair process is enhanced when we have the right attitude about it. Indeed. Okay, I mean, I've, I've seen that. I worked in medicine for uh, almost 40 years okay, and um, nuclear medicine, and I've seen people with attitudes that they came in with that was just amazing, even in the, in the midst of going through whatever they were going through, but they had the right attitude in their mind and their heart, and that was helping them in their healing process. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and I think if people look at their lifestyle changes as an exciting adventure. Like, I'm gonna do something new, right? I'm just gonna take this away today and see how I feel, or I'm gonna add this in and see how I feel. And if they look at it as an adventure, like this is something fun, like, wow, life's gonna change and things are gonna be different. They'll have a whole different experience if they're like, oh, I gotta give this up. I'm not gonna give that up. I'm not gonna quit drinking. I'm not gonna give up sugar. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people don't have to give everything up at one time. You know, yeah. take baby steps and, and do little steps. It makes a big difference. Well, thank you. I'm going to agree when you coming right back. I'm going to take another break. I'm going to pause for the cause. But this has been very enlightening. I hope you people out there are gaining something from this. You're never too old. All right? We'll be back in a moment. And Roxy, by the way, just so happens to be viewing the whole show on Facebook right now. We'll be right back. All roads, truck, and auto repair. They get it right the first time. Call 772-266-3303. 
All roads truck and auto repair. All roads lead here. When you want it done right, call 772-266-3303. Tell them Roxy sent you. Why call two men in a truck of the Treasure Coast? You want to move your business without moving a single meeting? You want it handled with no fuss. Lots of stuff, no time to move it. You need the pros that care. That's why you call two men in a truck of the Treasure Coast. Family owned and operated franchise. Call 772-236-0827. 772-236-0827. Zero eight two seven movers who care. Visit two men in a truck treasurecoast.com. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. And now back to Careology, the science of caring. Special guest host this week, along with his own guest, Bishop A. R. Rivers back with you. Hey, R. Rivers, thank you. We have a double guest evening tonight. Actually, triple, but Greg is in there as well. Thank you for participating. We appreciate it. And um, I was just, uh, in the, during the break, Miss um, Veronica was telling me about a friend of hers, and um, the gentleman was uh, in his 70s, is that mm-hmm. correct? Yes. Yeah. And how she was able to encourage him, even at that stage in his life, that he can make a difference and so I'm, I'm encouraging you to encourage someone that thinks that it's over it's never over even after the fat lady sings you still have hope you still have possibilities and you can start from where you are to change your lifestyle and change your life mm-hmm. and so, it's small changes it doesn't have to be give up everything it's making one my best friend's son literally just took soda out of the diet and has lost weight boom in the first week it's that simple just taking sodas out well soda that that's really not fair because sodas have large huge amounts of sugar huge regular small can of coke uh, at least uh, 50 grams they have 39 grams 10 teaspoons of sugar wow but if, you were t- if you're a three-soda-a-day drinker and you just take soda out, look, you're taking 30 teaspoons of sugar out of your diet right there. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. So you take those bitsy-bitsy steps. You take out soda, maybe drink a little bit water, a little bit more water. What I've mm-hmm. done is I don't just drink regular water. Sometimes I'll get a sparkling water because mm-hmm. it puts a little twist on it, put a little piece of lemon in it mm-hmm. and drink that, and I'm almost as satisfied as having mm-hmm. a soda. I don't think I've drank a soda in the last 20 years. It's all been right. a long time. I'm, I'm, we have I'm all this bottled them. water around us. I usually uh, take a few uh, drops of lemon concentrate in a glass, just a few drops, just to give it a slight, slight flavor. And it doesn't need to be sweet. You can get one of those infuser bottles and put, like, cucumbers and lime in it, and the water's delicious. You're just drinking plain water, no bubbles, but it's got flavor in it. I mean, those things are great. So today, this evening, we're speaking about, in addition to everything else, (laughs) self-healing. Self-healing. Everything does not have to be done in a doctor's office, but if you have a real issue, you should see your doctor. I'm not telling you not to go see your doctor, mm-hmm. but to therapy or treatment can be done in a variety of ways. You can take a healthy approach to healing your own body. We've gotten evidence of that. This young lady here, she told me about part of the ordeal. Now, how many years was that that you were suffering with your sickness? Oh, goodness. Mm-hmm. I had candida really badly. It had to be for about a year or so before it was diagnosed and it was debilitating like you could sleep i could sleep for 10 hours and be exhausted when i woke up and i had joint pain it bloated in my foggy head it was just terrible awful but it can and, and it's hard to function when you're sick like that you know so your job suffers your relationships suffer and you don't really know you're sick either do uh-uh. you no because you become accustomed to feeling that way and then when i went to the doctor they um, they didn't even find it. My holistic person, my kinesiology person is who found it. 
And so I confirmed it with a with a test, you know, and um, it was a very bad strain of candida. It wasn't candida albicans, which is the normal one. It was doubly anesis. So they said I was probably on my way to like a deadly cancer. Jesus. Yeah. So that being said, they said, you'll never heal that strain without taking Diflucan, a medication, an antifungal. And I said, I'm not taking that. I'm just not going to do it. So my kinesiologist helped me. It took a year. But I literally had to take out gluten, dairy, sugar of all forms. So no sweet vegetables, no fruits, no sugar of any kind, no carbs, no alcohol, no caffeine, no citric acid, which is in everything. The list of no was longer than the list of yes. But you, you did it. And I did it. And I dropped down to 110 pounds. I'm like 135 right now. So imagine 110 pounds. But I starved out the candida. And I that's where all a lot of my recipes came from was going through that trial so I believe that everything happens to us for a reason and now I'm, I'm supposed to be helping others to go through things because of what I went through now, that's interesting in 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 our church we have what is called a fast where we um, literally refrain from eating food or a consecration where you refrain from eating certain types of food Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we fast for off of salt, no salt on anything, no added salt, no cooking with salt, salt free. Sometimes it's sugar, no sugar, no sugar byproducts, nothing sweetened with sugar, mm -hmm. none of that stuff for a specific amount of time. And people have issues, mm -hmm. okay? And some of the issues have, go have just gone away because of the diet that you use. Sometimes it's not what you take in, and sometimes it's the things you don't mm -hmm. take in. Exactly. All right. So you refrain from doing some things. Is that there time and a season for everything? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a time for reframing in the form of a a fast, because literally what you did is you fasted against certain things that were going on with your body. Yep. You starved your body from the things it craved, mm -hmm. and it healed you. Yeah. You know. So that's an awesome testimony. Mm -hmm. And it's a possibility because we have living proof on you. You're sitting here and looking at this young lady. She looked like she never had a sick day in her life. <laughs> she looks as healthy as uh, I don't know. I can't even make a comparison. A comparison. Intermittent but, uh, fasting uh, can be very, very helpful. Now, along with that program, don't get me wrong. There were herbs and supplements and things that I had to do as well. But I think that what you're talking about, people do intermittent fasting and it helps them like Dr. Oz and certain people and, and groups, they won't eat before a certain hour of the day and they don't wanna put any brain power into anything except just things that are vital, you know, and, and they don't like choose their clothing, you know, they just wear like the same plain kind of clothing. So they don't wanna make any kind of, they have so many decisions to make, they don't wanna make those decisions, but they fast in the morning to kind of give themselves, you know, a boost for when they do. I think they eat at like noon or one o'clock. I think he eats at lunchtime. Fasting does cleanse some of the toxins from your body too. Sure does. Yeah, so it helps the liver because it keeps everything else out of the way and lets the liver do its thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it helps, uh, it yeah. allows you to expel a lot of things that's been stored in your system over an extended period of time. It's not a hard thing because what it's hard initially in your head, I'm so hungry, I'm so hungry. But sometimes that's just a mindset. Of the, because I've fasted for four days, okay, with just water, okay, and I didn't pass out over not having something. Mm -hmm. At the at the end, of, the matter of fact, you get a clearer thought when you fast. Mm -hmm. You know, thinking capacity has changed when you fast. What do you think about about the you know the, that on that level of thinking uh, and fasting and how that changes um, your outlook on things? I have heard that too. We learned a lot about that in school as well. And like Dr. Oz, there's a lot of like prominent, super busy people that run several businesses that they don't eat before a certain hour just for specifically for that. They hold their brain power until they, you know, want to start using it in the afternoon instead of, you know, using it up for little things throughout the day or overfeeding. A lot of us overfeed ourselves. I mean, it's, my, when my body gets, I eat to live, I don't live to eat. I love it. You I know. love that. I, that I could eat the same thing, you know, like I'll, I'll make oatmeal and prep, right? So I'll do steel cut oats because they're the best. And so um, I'll make a big pot, I'll put like six containers out, and I could eat oatmeal with different things on it every day because I don't eat to live, I live 
you know, I don't live to eat, I eat to live. So I know that that's going to be good for me with some nuts. And one day I'll put, you know, cinnamon on it. And the next day I'll put maybe some raisins or something on it. Mm -hmm. And it's something different every day. But I know that I don't need to have a ton of food to be satiated. Okay. And we, we're closing up pretty soon. How much time do oh, we wow. have? Oh, nine more minutes. We're good. Okay. So we're not quite there, but we're <laughs> approaching the the um the, uh, an end that we really don't want to go to we would we can do this one much much longer we have so much information to be able to be shared with um with our listeners um but i want to just um ask a, another question about this gluten-free um diet or is, uh, is it a fad is it something that's going to be here today and perhaps um going tomorrow or is it something that's a lifestyle change that's expected to be around for a long time because it really has true value. Um, years ago, they had what was called the Atkins diet, mm -hmm. and people did that. And then they had the, um, the low-carb diet, and people did that, low-carb, no-carb, and they did that for a period of time. And then some things were like just repackaged all right, so I hear about the keto diet. Keto. Oh, okay, I'm not sure exactly what that is, but I know it has to do something with... Uh, they put their body into ketosis, so they're doing only fats and then, proteins. Okay, so can you explain that ketosis business? I know diabetics have that problem. There's hundreds of dietary theories, and it all goes back to bio uh, bio-individuality in that kind of setting, because I've had friends who did really well on keto, and friends that did not do well at all on keto. And my concern with those high protein, high fat diets is only that um, they need to support themselves with a some type of protein digestion enzymes because the kidney has to um, process all of that additional protein. So I have a girlfriend who's doing a keto diet and all of a sudden, oh my gosh, you know, my back is killing me. And I'm like, just be cautious with that. You know, you don't want to tax the kidneys into you know, having some kind of kidney problems because you're putting too much protein and not and no way for the for the body to digest it because the kidneys have to process all that extra protein. So um, ketosis, I'm I've not done a keto diet. I have no desire to do it, but it does work really well for some people. But they put their body into a state of ketosis and then um, it basically just burns fat quicker. But they're eating fat and they're eating protein. But it's good because you're not eating any junk food. You know what I mean? You're not eating sugars or carbs of, you know, I don't think they do any carbs on a keto diet. No, that's it. But it, uh, to me, from just hearing some things about it, it's almost like a diabetic that's um, a little out of control with low blood sugar, all right? There's nothing there to burn other than the fat. There's nothing going in. There's no carbohydrates going in, so you're not getting your energy from carbs, mm -hmm. you're getting your energy from the burning your own from fat. the fat in your body, but that can go extend further to the loss of uh, muscle. Am I right? If they're not taking care of their body, yeah. I mean, you can't just go I, and and people say I I tell people all the time you can't just go on a diet and expect to not do anything. There's no magic pill when it comes to weight loss. You know, you have to. You can lose a bunch of weight, but you go back to doing what you did before, you're going to gain all that weight right back. So you really have to take care of your body. You know what I mean? Treat it like the temple that it is. And it's a lifestyle. Like Mediterranean seems to be a very well-respected diet because you still eat food. You know, they do the olive oils, the red wine at five, the community, because that's important. Um, they, uh, they do eat some meats, but not a lot of meats. They eat like mostly fish. Um, they do plant-based foods, you know, but they still do eat some proteins. But Mediterranean and Zone are very close to each other. I think Zone is the new Mediterranean. But there's hundreds of dietary theories that you, you just have to really figure out what works for your own body. Okay, now, that, okay, now we, we're just about winding up. But before we do that, what I'd like for you to do is you have some charts and diagrams mm -hmm. with you. And maybe you want to just explain to the, us about those things in the next four minutes. Sure. And that might be helpful to our, re, our, our listeners. Absolutely. And I will say that I am going to have a course coming up on this. I'm going to teach people how to read labels and look for the hidden sugars. And we're going to kind of go through some products that they didn't expect to have tons of sugar in them that do. 
So that course is going to be coming up. I should have something on the calendar by uh, April, mid-April for that, for the end of April. But they can find that on my website. I have, uh, it's www.eatingwithv.com. And it's also on my Facebook page, which is Eating With V. So that will take you right to that. But I'm going to, I'll promote that there. But the charts I'm putting in, one is going to be the new nutritional label so that people can see the difference between the two. And I say pay very close attention to serving size because whatever you see on that label, you multiply it by however many servings you're having and people don't understand that. Do they, is it listed what a serving size actually yes, is? they okay. do have to put that. Like on this label, a serving size is two thirds of a cup. But two thirds of a cup of what? Like if we had two thirds of a cup of cereal, we'd be like double that, right? <laughs> so you need to put on there double that number. And I also wanted to share, I found this awesome resource online, 75 different names for sugar. So um, things you wouldn't even expect, you know, like um, isoglucose, lactose, we know is like a milk sugar. But there's stuff like um, dextrin, dextrose, mannitose, malatol, malatase. I mean, they put all of these names. So when you're looking at the back of the label, you need to watch for these You're speed things. reading looking for sugar. Right. Not there. Exactly. <laughs> if you see three or four of them, stop. A bit deceptive. Isn't it? <laughs> My rule We're is if it has, get you. if there's more than five ingredients, you should stay away from it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't understand, if those ingredients are not uh, obvious items you're familiar with, <laughs> yes. don't necessarily trust it. Then. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Idea. And I think we touched on the things that I really wanted to say. I mean, uh, if you see something on a on a label that you can't pronounce, do you really want to eat it? Probably not. <laughs> and eat your eat your own, like eat real food, cook real food, eat food. When you cook your own food, you know what's in the food. You go out to restaurants, they're sprinkling flour, they're sprinkling sugar, they're sprinkling everything in there. Not that I want to take away from restaurants. Treat yourself, go out, you know, but eat at home most of the time. Get a blood glucose monitor and keep an eye on that too because if your sugar is too high, skip a fruit that morning or something. Sure. Or if it's too low, have an extra fruit, you know. And but stay away from the juices. Oh, and yeah, the juices and, and oh, the sodas. Stay away from the sodas. The right. juices Carbonate. have just as much sugar as the sodas do. Yeah. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah. And the carbonation is not that great for you either. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so I'll, I'll add my two cents. <laughs> <laughs> exercise. And exercise. That does. <laughs> yes, that helps. Exercise. Remember, the sugar, skip the sugar, eat real food, and exercise. Yeah. One last thing with you, uh, Ms. V. Um, book recommendations, either your own publication or someone else that might have published something that may be helpful. Did, can you make a recommendation on that? Or if not, can yes. you put it down on your site, on your website? All Absolutely. Right, uh, Greg. Two things. One is there's a documentary called um, That Sugar Film. It's very entertaining. It's about two hours long. And we'll I'll send the label so that y'all can see it. It is it is one of the best documentaries on sugar, and it really is an eye-opener. I recommend it to everyone I speak to, and I think everyone on the planet should see it. It's called uh, um, That Sugar Film. And then the book, Sarah Wilson is amazing. She cured her Hashimoto um, by getting rid of sugar from her diet. She has an eight-week program called I Quit Sugar. So it's Sarah Wilson, I Quit Sugar. It's a book an eight-week program called I Quit Sugar. And I will have a book something coming on the way soon. Okay, and you also have um, a classes or maybe a lectures that are coming up, either individual or group. You gotta let us know about that. We'll go to your website and we'll look for you there. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate you. You did a great job. You are amazing. Oh, wow. You're both amazing. Wow, wow, I'm around the right company. Our favorite thank curologist, uh, Roxy, uh, be very proud of you. Thank you, you Roxy. Good you. job. And folks, you've been listening to Carology, the science of caring on WPSL Port St. Lucie. <laughs>